Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We're going to be doing a freezing point depression lab. We're going to find the molar mass of an unknown organic solid by using freezing point depression, which is colligative properties. We're going to be doing that on the block day, and so this is going to be your um, little bit of an introduction. I'm going to tell you your pre-lab questions, your procedure, so you know what to do when you come in on that block day, some post-lab questions, and then also how you're going to be graded on this. And so let's start with a little bit of an introduction. Anytime we're going to be doing a freezing point depression problem, we want to take a look at our equation sheet. And more importantly on that equation sheet, we want to zero in on the gases, liquids, and solutions part of it. We're going to be zeroing on three different equations. We're going to be zeroing in on the delta T is equal to the I, K times the molality. The molality, which is equal to the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. And the last one of the moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. And so these three equations are going to come in really helpful. Anytime you have a freezing point depression or a boiling point elevation problem, take a look at these three equations, write them down, and fill in the stuff that you know. Now, as pre-lab write-up, pre-lab questions that you're going to put in your lab report is, uh, number one, you're going to list four measurements that you need to make in this laboratory. You're going to list one value that you're going to need to get from me in order to complete this lab. And also, you're going to show your four calculations. Yes, there's not just three calculations. There's four calculations that you're going to have to use to determine the molar mass of an unknown organic solid. So that's your pre-lab questions that I'm going to want you to do. And, uh, and I'm going to give you a list of all kinds of values that you can pick from but you're going to f have to find the four measurements from this list that you need to make. And we have moles of solute, mass of solute, the KF for the solute, moles of solvent, mass of solvent, and KF for the solvent, the freezing point temperature of the solute, the freezing point temperature of the solvent, and the freezing point temperature of the solution. You're going to have to figure out which four measurements, measurements that you're going to need to do for this lab. And you're also going to have, to have to find the one value from this list that you're going to need from me. And you're also going to have to show, again, your four calculations. The next is the laboratory procedure. Um, you might want to go through this a few times to just make sure you have it down. Number one, you're going to have to find your partner that's going to be on the board. Okay, As soon as you find your partner, start to get the work. If your partner's not there on that day, come right to me and I'll make sure I uh, assign you with a group. Number two, get your safety glasses on got to go into the drawer, get your safety glasses, make sure you're safe in this lab. That's going to count as part of your grade. Number three, you're going to have to get a beaker and two test tubes. That will be on my front desk. Make sure you right away get a beaker and two test tubes. And number four, you can also get the value that you're going to need from Mr. Aiden. So if you've already figured that out, come and get it from me. I will gladly give it to you secretly, of course. Next thing you're going to do for the laboratory procedure is put your beaker, uh, fill it up with some water, put it on a hot plate, start to get it warm. Okay, You can um, use a hot plate with another group if you want, um, since we only have a few different hot plates there. And you can use someone else's water as well. Okay, But you do need your own two test tubes. What you're going to do in your, with your first test tube is, you're going to put in some lauric acid. Fill it up about um, almost, uh, almost three quarters of the way full with lauric acid. You don't care about the mass of this, so you, you don't need to get the mass of this first bit of lauric acid. Put it in your hot water, melt it down, so it'll go from a solid to a liquid. Melt down, break those intermolecular attractions, and then after you've melted it down, take it out of the water and put a temperature probe in and start to measure the temperature. Now, just a little note that, that I'm going to be checking on that you're going to do is don't put the temperature probe all the way at the bottom. Don't rest it at the bottom because sometimes there, there gets a little bubble of air and you don't get the correct values. Okay, Make sure that temperature probe is in the middle of your lauric acid. Okay, and You're going to just let it come back to room temperature which means it's going to freeze up. And I'll give you a range that it, the, the melting point slash freezing point should be in. It should be between 40 and 50 degrees. So when you're in that range, make sure you're looking at your graph. And what are you looking for in your graph is a flat line on the temperature. 
when your intermolecular forces begin to attract each other and it starts to become a solid again. Don't keep looking at the liquid, look at your graph, look at your temperature. When it's constant, write that value down. Now, after you get the a good melting point, freezing point, remember if you mess up, you can always melt it back down again. As soon as you get that good temperature, melt it back down again, take out your temperature probe, clean off your temperature probe immediately. Make sure you do that. Clean off that temperature probe. You don't want that lark acid to freeze up on that temperature probe. After you get done, put your test tube up at the front. I'll have labeled a little place for the used lauric acids, okay? Don't use it again. It's done. Next thing you're going to do, come back, get your second test tube. You're on the second part of the lab procedure now. Get your test tube again. You're going to put in lauric acid, but this time get the mass. You're going to put in approximately three grams, three grams. If there's a change on this, I'll make sure I let you know. But you're going to get about three grams of lauric acid. Make sure you record the precise value of that. You're also then going to get about one gram. Make sure you measure the mass of the one gram. Put the one gram in afterwards of your unknown organic. Again, you're going to get three grams. Make sure you record that precise mass of lauric acid. And about one gram, record the precise mass of your unknown organic solid. You're then going to put it back in the hot water and get it melted down again. Now, a very important thing is once you get it melted down, both substances into the liquid state, put the temperature probe in and stir it. Make sure you stir it around. and Don't lose any mass here. You do not want to lose any mass. You're going to stir it around with the temperature probe. Make sure you get a uniform solution. Get both of that that lauric acid and the unknown organic solid, which is now a liquid, into a uniform solution. Make sure you do that. And again, don't put the temperature probe down at the bottom, put it in the middle, and you are going to take a look at the graph and you are going to get a different freezing point. And we all know it's going to be lower. That's why they call it depression. You become very depressed during winter, right? So it's going to freeze at a lower temperature. Make sure you record that temperature. Again, at that point, you, if you get a good temperature, if you don't, melt it back down again, do it again. Once you get a really good temperature and you're sure about it, melt it back down, take out the temperature probe, clean that temperature probe immediately, and put that, te that, put that test tube, that used test tube, up front at my desk. Okay. So you are done with the laboratory procedure. The next thing you're going to do is make sure you fill out a data table with your four measurements. I'm not going to tell you what measurements they are. You've got to figure them out. And you got to make sure you fill out a data table with the things you have measured. Using those measurements, you're then going to make some calculations. And this is what you're going to do on your calculations part of your lab write-up. You're going to show all your equations, all four equations, you're going to show substitutions, so the numbers, the measurements, and the values substituted for those. And eventually, at the end, you're going to calculate your molar mass of your unknown using correct significant digits and correct units. Make sure you're very correct on both of these. Last, you're going to do post-lab questions. And these are the post-lab questions. You can actually do number one before you ever walk in the lab. Number one. It says the unknown is found to contain 81.8181% of carbon, 10.9090% of hydrogen, and 7.2727% of oxygen. And using that, you're going to determine the empirical formula of the unknown. Make sure you show all your work for this. And number two, using the molar mass that you determine in your lab, determine the molecular formula of the unknown. Okay? And these will be your two post-lab questions. Let me let you know what you're going to be graded on with this molar mass by freezing point depression lab. One point you're going to get for a correct pre-lab write-up for those four measurements, the one value you need from me, and the four calculations. One point for your data table, one point for your calculations, one point for your post-lab questions, and one point for your lab conduct. Let me let you know what your lab conduct is going to be. It's going to be that you are safe, number one. And number two, that you know what you're doing, that you've seen the procedure, you understand the procedure, and you get right to work. 
and you will be graded five points you will get an A, four points you'll get a B, three points a C, two for a D, and one point for an F, and this will go on the homework grade as a pretty large homework assignment. And that's our molar mass by freezing point depression, and um, hopefully you're ready. If you have any questions before, uh, watch the vodcast again, and uh, you can email me a question if you want, or you can ask me, but I probably won't answer a whole lot. So, good luck on the block day, and uh, come to school and be ready to work right away, and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.